everyone, Luke here and welcome back to the channel. So it's going to be a bit of a fun one because what we're actually going to be doing today is taking multiple STL files, merging them together to create one 3D printable file without the need of any CAD software. So what we're actually going to be making is a lighter case and this is going to be for my older stepbrother as a little bit of a Christmas gift I guess. But before we go off and design or create what we want to print out, there's three things that I want to go through. And the first one of this is going to be the style. How do you want this thing to look? What style are you going to use? And off the top of my head, I can think of quite a few styles, actually. Uh, steampunk, diesel punk, which we've done a lot of. Uh, Novo, Deku, uh, Medieval, and Gothic. There we go, there's a good few examples. <laughs> and the next thing that I want to talk about is the utility of it. So obviously we want something that will work, and say if I got my lighter case like this and I 3D printed, I attached, sorry, a bird scar at a 90 degree angle like that, what's the odds that that's going to last more than a week? Especially when it's going in and out of your pocket, it's most likely going to break. Or say if I put something really close to the metal portion and you constantly light it, well, it's going to melt over time, so the usability of it is going to be pretty poor. So that's something to keep in mind. And the last thing that I want to talk about is the person. Who is it for and what do they like? And those three things are something that you should keep in mind because the product that you make is going to be a combination of them three elements. Right, now we've gone through that, let's go over to the computer and take a look at what I've got. Right, so now we've got that talking bit out of the way, it's time to find the files that we actually want to use. And as you can see, I've already found them. But before I show you them, there's one last thing that I want to mention and that is, it's really easy to make this very busy. By adding a lot of stuff, you'll make it busy and the utility of the thing will actually start to decrease a little bit. So what we want to do is just add enough stuff to suggest a style. And I'm obviously going to go for a little bit of a nouveau deco sort of gothic style. So um, now that's been cleared up, let's take a look at the files. So obviously this is going to be the base. And this is my clipper case that should perfectly fit my lighter. And then the next thing that we're going to be using is this. And this is a shield. And as you can see, it's nicely curved. So once I actually shrink that down, that should curve around the, uh, around the lighter case very nicely. And our third file is this sword right here. And I'm thinking about using two of these, one either side. And that should look really nice. And then finally are these sort of diamond style rupees. And these are going to go on the back side, and in this game there's three different colours of rupees depending on the value. And that's probably something that you've noticed, is all of these items are from a game called Legend of Zelda. And the reason why I'm using these is because my stepbrother really likes that game. Right, so now we've got all of that cleared up, let's download all of these files and take it over to Chittybox. Right, so we're now in Chittybox and we've imported all of our STL files. So what we've got to do now is just resize everything so it can fit onto the clipper case. So let's do it. So with this master sword, we have to rotate it 90 degrees. Now the files have been resized and they're all in the correct orientation, it's now time to fine adjust everything so the whole group of files are connected. So the first thing that we want to do is the shield. So we click on the shield, click. Okay, so now we've resized everything and all the files are in the right orientation, it's time to fine adjust all of these so the files are grouped together. So We'll start off with the shield by clicking on the shield, click move, and then click centered. Oh, and now you can't see it. There it is. So now we can find adjust this by messing around with the axis, by bringing this forward. And now we can bring this up to the top. And there we go, that looks nice. So what we want to do next is take our sword and copy paste this and put one either side. So let's do that. So all the files have been put into place really nicely. The last ones that we have to do is move these rupees just underneath the shield right here. And this will be super easy. We can just drag and click 
and then we can tidy this up in a second. So we'll put that one there, and then we'll put that one around here. And then we can just double check that right here, X zero, so it's in the center. And then we can just play around with this to make sure that these files are going to be grouped together really nicely. But now, all of that's together, that is pretty much it. So we can now slice this and take this down to the 3D printer. So let's do it. And there we go, now all of them files have been merged together, it's time to slice it and actually take it down to the 3D printer. It's going to take around 3 hours to actually print out, and it's going to cost me around 12 cents, which I think is actually really good. So, let's save that, stick it on the USB, and go do just that. So we pulled that out the 3D printer, gave it a bath in IPA to make sure it's nice and clean and all I've done now is stuck a nice coat of black spray paint over the top. And the reason I did that is because it would be really difficult just to colour in the background. So my idea was to paint it all black and then all the bits that I added I'll go over with a white acrylic and then I can actually fit in the colour afterwards. So let's do that. And there we go, this sleeve has now been painted and I've left it overnight to dry and I'm not going to toot my own horn here, but I will. <laughs> I painted this really, really well. And it actually really closely resembles um, the items in the actual game. If I just looked at that, I'd be able to tell what game it's from and of course it's from Legend of Zelda. So, here is a close-up. How amazing does that look? I mean, I think it just looks fantastic and I'm going to be sore about giving this away because I like it that much that I just want to keep it. So I'll probably end up printing another one at some point. But the idea of this video was to show you how easy it actually was to merge or smash or combine or whatever you want to call it, these STL files together to actually create a 3D printable um, file. And as you can see, it worked really nicely. So I thought that was the main point of this video and you don't need to use any sort of CAD software to do it. So with that being said, that does bring me to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them all. Anyway guys, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you later.